じみましょう。しましょうか。So first off, let's see if we can go ahead and make the stand for this thing. I found this file free on the Creality app while I was browsing around, and I also found this dragon which was standing on a pedestal. So I upscaled the dragon a little bit more because the file itself was a little tiny for some reason. I don't know why. And I removed the pedestal that the dragon was sitting on, basically just lowering the dragon on the base plate so that the pedestal that it was sitting on was cut off on the print. Scaled down the katana stand a little bit because it was too big in that file, so I scaled that down just a little bit so it'd be able to fit my shorter size katana. The print was going to be somewhere between 12 to 15 hours, depending on how many supports I was going to use and、uh, how much material it's going to be using. So, roughly somewhere between 10 or 15 hours is when this file is going to be done. Brought the file over to the 3D printer and just hit click and it started going. So, while that stuff was printing, let's introduce you guys to what this katana is all about. This is what. This is a. Wow. This is actually a reverse blade katana that I found while I was at MegaCon. The owner was going to give it to me for $80. However, now that we figured out that the blade had rust on it and the sheet that set was pretty beat up, they gave me half off, so I bought this thing for about $40. Bucks. This thing really needs some TLC and. I really want to restore this thing. It also kind of brings back memories about the first katana I ever had, which accidentally split in half because of how crappy the welds were. So I wanted to bring back and collect another one, but do a proper restoration on it. So, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and sand everything down, starting with the sheath itself. Going back and forth between 1,000 to 800 grit.、Uh, went rougher, then went softer, just so I can push back a little bit of the dents on the wood and also kind of sand it back enough where the new paint's going to stick to it. Once I got the sheath down the way I wanted it, I went ahead and jumped over to the blade itself, keeping it intact with the handle itself.、Um, it made it a hell of a lot easier to be able to hold it and sand it at the same time. Now, this method that I'm using to clean the katana, I don't know if I would recommend it, but it is the only thing that I can think of that can at least help polish, quote unquote, and get rid of the rust that is just sitting on the blade. Same method on the sheath. I just used the 800 to 1000 grit sandpaper, sanded it.、Uh, actually, used a little bit of some water so I can wet sand it to help kind of pick off some of the dirt that's on the rest of the blade, too. Probably went over this blade about、eh, three or four times, just sanding it back and forth 800 to 1000, 800 to 1000, all wet sanded. Once I was pretty much satisfied with the way I wanted it and I got rid of at least all of the rust,、uh, I went to the 3000 grit and just, just went up and down on it a bunch of times. That's what she said. <laughs> a funny, funny joke. Used the 3000, went up and down the blade, made sure that the entire thing was polished up before I could re sheath it again. <sighs> Still waiting on that print, huh? Well, okay, let's go ahead and get the sheath painted up then. The color I'm going to be using is the low semi gloss black. I wanted to go for a slight more stealthy color, not a gloss black like the original sheath was. Did two medium coats of that, sanded it back a little bit more in between each coat, and then gave it some time to cure. And then by the next day, I was able to put a little bit of some clear coat on it, wet sanded that clear coat back a little bit so that it went back to its flat, semi gloss sort of color. Ah, there we go. 12 hours later, the stand and the little dragon are ready to go. Let's bring it to the table. 
First thing I gotta do is remove all the weird supports on this thing. all the supports were removed, it's time to get to sanding these things. With the dragon I had to do a different approach. I took some smaller pieces of sandpaper and some nail filer pieces to be able to get some of the stuff that are stuck in between, uh, I guess it's hair piece or it's scales in the back of its head. That and also in between the toes. You gotta clean your toes, man. You gotta make sure you look good. For the stand, I think I was going to spray paint that because there wasn't a whole lot of stuff I was going to add as far as weathering and coloration wise. So I paint matched it to the sheath, which was going to be the low center gloss black. I didn't need to add any clear coat to this uh, because if I did, it would probably ruin the 3D printed material, the PLA. Uh, so I just gave two medium coats of the semi-gloss black and just left it at that. Now for the dragon, I wanted to make sure that this was going to match the coloration of the katana itself. So I went with a forest kind of green color. And then I swapped it over to the gold, the metallic gold that I always loved. I think our little lucky dragon looks pretty good with the green and gold underbelly. Kind of a cool color combo. It's a little different and I think it was going to match the sword really well. Alright, it was a week and a half later. The supplies for the handle came in. All these pieces came from my website on Etsy called Handmade Katana Shop. This person sells everything from the hand guards to the pommels to a fully built handle that you can choose a multitude of different colors from. Highly, highly suggested. This is a great place to be able to get some really cool components for your brand new katana. All right, enough yapping. Let's go. What the hell was that? Let's go ahead and start disassembling this thing. So I wanted to make sure I did my research uh, before I put these little tiny pieces on and I think that they would fit in the middle of the katana itself, but I could be wrong on that, but hopefully this looks good. So the pommel piece that came with the kit was a little bit too large, but I was able to add some spacing using some foam and then the piece was able to slide on and it stayed nice and snug.
Now, let's try go ahead and tackle what's called the Tsuka wrap, which basically is a very complicated uh, method of using the string and going around the blade one time, going up, twisting it up, and then going around again. It's such a complicated and a very heavily patient oriented method. But within a couple hours and also a couple of days, uh, I got enough practice with it and I got as close as possible to the uh, original diamond shape that you would see on some katanas. Now there was one flaw with the kit, um, the handguard was not fitting the little, I guess a little metal bracket that went over the blade itself. So we may have to do a little bit of some modifications to this guy. Brought it on over to the garage, brought out the Dremel, bring out the gloves. Uh, sure, yeah, we'll use the welder helmet just in case of metal starts flying everywhere. That was a close one. With several, several hours of trimming, hammering, for no reason, finally got the little piece to fit inside there. Got back to the house, glued the dragon, put a little tiny piece of foam underneath it since it did stick up from the stand a little bit. Uh, so I gave it some spacing and then put it right on the stand. Now the final piece of this entire build, the katana itself. Mate